All right, everybody, as promised, part two of at least a three-part series, who knows, maybe four. Um, we're gonna lift this guy up and kind of see what's going on underneath that, because that really is what counts on this guy. So I'll go ahead and lift her up. I'll give you some measurements, some diameters. I can't take the truck apart yet. We're gonna have this thing laser scanned this coming week. So we'll be doing the full exterior, interior, removing some components and getting a proper uh, drawing so we can make all sorts of goodies for it. So here we go. One thing, first thing I'm gonna start off with, I will pull this wheel off, but I wanna tell everybody who's doing these guys, if you do the steelies, which is what we voted for, cause, cause old school that way, this wheel lock, because it is so long, you've actually made it easier for a thief to steal this thing. All they have to do is take a hammer and they can break that off. It works perfect with the aluminum ones, but for these steel guys, I don't have a suggestion for you, but I guarantee this is actually uh, gonna make it almost more tempting or something to get that off. Looks good, no surprises here. I bought Coil Springs. That's gonna be awesome for upgrades later on because iBox is a great company to deal with and I already know they offer some different springs for it. So very cool. Beefy rotor for sure, uh, vented. Uh, that's thick. <clears throat> that thing is about, uh, call it 10 millimeters, maybe 12 millimeters in the outer part and then another at least eight to nine on the inside. So that shouldn't warp so bad. But what I'm excited about is this. This thing is massive. These kingpins are huge. I'm gonna grab the other wheel and start rotating. Just kind of turn the angle, which is a bear. There we go. The power steering gearbox is so big on this thing that it takes a lot to kind of push that thing back. And that combined with a ridiculously small amount of trail or caster, I should say, I think is what's kind of pulling, make it kind of hard for us. But inside this bad boy, you've got the cutest little double carden U-joint setup. So because it's a double carden, that makes it actually officially a CV, but most of us know it is a double carden U-joint. Kingpin bearings are massive. This knuckle assembly is gorgeous. Usually I'm used to seeing a Jeep where you have this big heavy iron thing hanging out, but not having any of the support structure in there. So hats off to the uh, manufacturer who built these axles. Um, our telehandler actually has these axles on it. <clears throat> I'm gonna take some measurements of this insanely huge tie rod. <laughs> it's, this is like one ton stuff on a little baby truck. Drag link is huge. The welded mounts through here for just the NA sway bar are, it's just crazy, it's impressive. So there is no disconnect push button, disconnect sway bar thing. We'll see if that could happen in the future, who knows? I know I have enough real estate in the rear to do what we're kind of thinking, but uh, we'll see. A beautiful thing with this too, you guys, is <clears throat> this axle, the way they did this. The center line of that axle is actually slightly shorter from here to there as it is from the top. So it's almost the equivalent of a shaved bottom. And then on the opposing side, coming in through the side is where they went ahead and did the actual fill for this. So as you're grinding over the rocks, you don't have to worry about smearing that thing off or your bolt. The other cool trick thing is we got one, two, three, and a four. Those are already drilled and they're already drilled and tapped threaded for, uh, we could put our nice little skid on there. Really cool. I'm gonna get you the diameter of this axle too, but it is massive. Um, for this size truck, it's just huge. One thing that Grenadier did, which everybody's kind of doing these days, is they're doing a CV joint drive shaft. All four joints are CVs. I mean, legitimate CV joints there. So um, used on a lot of vehicles. I'm sure they're plenty strong. My only question is where they kind of neck down. That does put a concentrated point to snap that off. And the fact that the tubes are relatively large, which this is big for a small car, <clears throat> um, there's not gonna be a lot of tapered flex to this. So when that thing jams up and hits, your chance of snapping that off <clears throat> are pretty good. Um, so we'll see. If we have to, we spoke about doing something where I may have to do some clocking to get some different caster. So we might be making a custom U-joint for the front. I hope not because I really do like these and they last forever and they run well. Okay, one thing too, that's quite nice. I, I must not have enough new vehicles, but 
I never see stainless steel brake lines on a factory truck. That's, or any vehicle at all other than race stuff. So that's nice. People are gonna argue that, yeah, stainless doesn't stretch. And you are 100% correct, but if it's engineered correctly, you're not gonna stretch them. You don't wanna be stretching the rubber ones anyway. Although I did rely on that in my younger years of uh, not failing those. Now the cool part is the steering gearbox on this thing. It's pretty beefy here. I mean, let me give you some light. That is a large sector shaft through there. What's hiding up here though is insanity. That steering gearbox is just as beefy as it can be. Uh, that pitman arm is, Oh man, it's big, you guys. And that is made by Bosch, the gearbox and that Pittman arm. The skid plate, it's pretty legit. It's not overly thick. It's tucked up out of the way pretty good. There is, I already hit it on something. Um, it, this, this does hang a little bit low here, but hiding up in here are some of our coolant lines running around doing things. So you gotta have this area very well protected because if you don't, it's gonna be a bad day. So when we look at doing that, uh, bull bar bumper, it's gonna, it, this is gonna be properly protected. But the other thing that's important too is people get a little carried away with armoring and covering stuff up to the point where you can't get to it. So if there's any sort of problem or something caught up in there, you can't get it out. But we'll make sure we address that. Um, bump stops proper. And you know, we're gonna do a 14 position reservoir shock for this thing. Something that can handle up to real world abuse and weight, not race car builder stuff that's gonna have to be rebuilt in two years. Um, but I'm telling you right off the bat, these shocks, it's a brand new vehicle. It's got, you know, 300 miles on it. They feel really good. Um, they're made by Sox. Sox has been building our Unimog shocks for decades. So that's a good manufacturer. As long as they stepped it up on the cost, they should be good. And they do feel good. We'll see how long they last, but we'll go ahead and provide the reservoir shock, which is going to help when guys start overloading this thing, or you kind of custom tune the dampening to what you need. But again, no complaints from the factory one. All right. In the man cave here. This thing, like I said, is impressive. It's got all sorts, there's beef everywhere, man. It's uh, no baloney, all beef. So kind of a cool thing right here. Starters directly on the bottom of this transmission, which is neat. It's got this cast aluminum block on there that you can, looks like you would remove a couple bolts and drop that, that's cool. This is hanging down, that's not gonna work out very well. So we'll just put something so a branch or something doesn't catch that. Uh, we have a pretty open spot through here that is just begging for a skid plate. The beautiful thing is I've got some what appear to be threaded holes there. Uh, we got some other stuff in here, so we should be able to make probably a single piece of aluminum skid that runs through here. Plastic oil pan, not my favorite thing in the world, especially if you hit that, because you know, you're probably gonna crack it, but who knows, um, we'll see. Another really cool part is check out how beefy so that's a beefy cross member to begin with. When it comes down into the actual uh, uh, track bar or panard mart bar mount, it's beautiful. It's an organic looking thing. They've got a lot of radiuses on it. There's no sharp edges to create stress risers. Pretty slick. And Enios went ahead and chose, they powder coated the whole exterior. They did the rough finish on there, which I'm not the biggest fan of, but it does look nicer. Um, it will look dirtier because mud and whatnot kind of clings to it. <coughs> um, but they also did a heavy amount of basically like a Cosmoline almost waxing of the inside of the frame. One of the reasons they went crazy with that is Land Rover defenders always were notorious for rotting out the chassis. So any of us wanted to make sure that that <clears throat> any fears were completely abated on that thing. And they did do that. Their links or control arms are nice, nice big uh, rubber bushings. The mounts are just massive as well. Cast into this guy through here. Cool thing. It's a high pinion, you guys, really neat. So a high pinion front third member. I mean, it it's Dana 60 size, but it's not way far from that. It's beefier than a 44 for sure. Uh, another interesting thing, electric cooling fan, which is very commonplace these days with pretty much everybody and everything. It's just hard to imagine that thing keeping things cool, but you know, we're driving our 700 horse Raptor R pretty hard and that works. Nice thing I like to see about it, it is manufactured by Spall and I have had nothing but good luck with Spall fans. So that should be great. The nice thing with that electric fan too, is that allows you for the deep fording mode, which you can push on this guy, which cuts off that fan. I'm sure that the software monitors to see if it's getting too hot and either gives you a warning or kicks on. Not sure one of those two, but pretty beefy on that. Uh, <clears throat> you're kind of standard, uh, and I, not an anti-sway bar, but your uh, um, stabilizer. It's down underneath. Yeah, you're gonna smash and hit it. 
yeah, good chance, but it's kind of par for the course. The location seems right. Uh, the mounting for it is beefy. Guys are starting to put bigger, <clears throat> stiffer anti-sway bars on it. Not sure if that's the way to go. Uh, not sway bars, but uh, um, uh, steering stabilizers. Not sure if that's the way to go, but uh, anyhow. And again, I'm just gonna comment one more time on how beefy this is. I mean, let me get a tape measure on this. <clears throat> just to give you all an idea. That's four inches across. <laughs> that, I mean, that's beefy. This tube, the axle tube is, let me just get an eye on it and I'll get out of the way so you can see it. It's a solid, th it's about three and a quarter inches in diameter. It's beefy. Um, in fact, let me get a little caliper on that just so I know. Cause the good news is guys, I'm looking at doing a comparison on this to, I was going to go against like a Jeep Gladiator, but honestly, I don't think it's fair. Um, I think this stuff's so much bigger, I might have to compare it to a one-ton truck. So this guy is, holy cow, that is three and three-eighths inch diameter OD. That's pretty beefy. So uh, pretty nice on that. Let's see what else we got. We have alignment pins through here. It's an eccentric bolt. Push forward, pull back. That's nice. That should be pretty commonplace, but uh, you don't see it on everything. Factory, cool little mud flaps that hide out in here. This is impressive. The little X... We're just going to, we're just going to call this X-Force, the X-Force brace underneath here. That's the main mount for the transmission transfer case combo. It's beefy. You got four big bolts that go directly to the chassis on that. Actually five, six big bolts to the chassis. So that's beefy. Um, great mounting platform for skid plate type stuff, which kind of leads me to, ugh, not a big fan of this. This fuel tank hangs down really low. It comes factory with a full skid plate. That is not an incredibly heavy gauge. That is yeah, maybe 16 gauge is my guess. So we'll have to come up with something to help out with that. There is some tubular work on this. So we may just go directly over the top of that with another reinforcement, but it absolutely behind this heat shielding, I kind of spied up in there. There are tubes running directly up into that. So it is, it's legit cool. I see good separate grounding wires here. Not sure what they're going to, but that's a nice little touch, a dedicated ground on that. Um, the transfer case itself, this is neat. These two lines here, it is a full-time four-wheel drive vehicle or all-wheel drive, so there's a center diff. Those two lines are cooler lines that go to the lower, what would be the left-hand side lower cooler that is inside that bumper. There's no cooling fan on that. It's just air rolling through that to help cool it but that is just for cooling this. I haven't seen one on a transfer case before, so that's pretty neat. There is another set of lines that goes up to the main, you see what looks like an intercooler across the front. When you look behind that grill, it's probably, I'm gonna say, oh, six inches by, I gotta get my tape measure out here, six by 25 to 28 inches across, and maybe an inch and three quarter thick. That is just a cooler for this transmission alone. Really neat. Um, Interestingly enough, <clears throat> this must have a liquid intercooler on there because I thought one of the one of those three coolers would have been for a, a charge air cooler. It's not. The third one, which is in this uh, bottom passenger side for us here in North America, that too has a small spall fan on it. Interestingly enough, that works in parallel with the cooling system and the radiator on this thing is big, very big. So that one works in parallel just to add some additional cooling. Another neat thing is this guy has got hiding up in here some little louvers that work with, if you're flying down the highway without this fan running, those guys should blow open and let a lot of exhaust out. When the fan creates a little bit of vacuum or suction on that, I'm assuming those guys will draw closed. But what's neat about that is Ineos thought about, you know, a little bit of fuel savings by not draining down that alternator running that huge fan because it is a big boy. Frame, insane frame, massive, massive. Uh, getting your hand around this. Don't take my word from me, from me. Let's get some measurements here. This sucker is over four and a half inches wide and it is a solid seven, seven and a half inches tall. Doubled up, they beefed up the mounts. There's extra scuff going over that. It all integrates into here. That is the biggest frame I've ever seen on something this small. Another nice thing that they do is they carry over to these mounts right here. Those are gonna be for your rock sliders. So you got bolts here. In fact, there's already a threaded uh, uh, nut welded onto that. 
There's another mounting surface right here. And that's actually doubled up. That is really nice and stout. And then what they did is they did plastic through here, which is great actually, because now I could bring up a nice tight slider on that. If it does tap something, you're never gonna see if I actually did a little bit of damage to, to that panel there. Third mount, by the way, there is a chunk of this huge cross member here that pokes out that I think I can almost get into to do a third mount onto this slider here. Anyos already makes uh, factory rock sliders, but let's face it, they hang down really low and they probably don't stick out far enough. So um, we're gonna just go ahead and upgrade that a little bit. All right, working our way slowly to the back. This exhaust is cool. It's really cool. Uh, there's pretty much no connections. It's all welded together, uh, meaning no quick connects to kind of fail. It is pushing a three inch diameter, fully stainless steel exhaust is what it appears to be. Um, really cool. It goes to a ginormous muffler in the back with twin outlets on that guy. Um, I may get proven wrong by removing that thing, this thing being way too loud, but if we can make some real estate back there, we can put some fuel capacity and I'll show you that in a minute. But first, cool trailing arms, lower links here. Beautiful, nice, stout. Um, can't ask for more. I don't know how thick that is or if it's DOM. I bet you it's DOM seamless stuff. I'm sure, it, I'm almost sure it is. The rear brakes, the rotors themselves are not vented. They're not overly huge. Then again, it is the rear brakes. Rear brakes don't do a whole heck of a lot, but uh, it's enough. As heavy of a vehicle as this is, let's just say this, I'm confident they did homework and I'm sure that's gonna be plenty fine. They integrate the parking brake into the caliper itself. So there's a mechanical lever in there, old school, like that. It doesn't have a separate set of drums, little drum shoes in there. So that's cool. And it's actually, it's a freaking cable. I love it. Oh, that's the best, man. Because the nice thing is, it's, I'm so tired of all this push button on off park brake stuff. This guy's a lever. So you're sitting on a hill. Yes, you're an automatic. You shouldn't have this problem. But if you're literally rolling off, a, you could run that park brake to help you out with some things. The old school four wheelers trick, you know, that type of deal. So. Uh, again, I just can't keep, I keep talking about the axles, man. All their weld, weld on everything is just wicked beefy. And a sway bar back here is pretty substantial. The links are high up out of the way. That's nice. <clears throat> so we'll see. Maybe the rear sway bar disconnect is going to be enough to make this thing perform how we want it. Uh, cause I think it'll be easier to do what we are kind of thinking about for the, for the rear one as opposed to the front. So that's nice. And then as I start working my way around here, this is cool. I got my hitch installed and I got the software updated on this guy. That was for the trailer wiring for the most part. I think there was some sort of glitch. So I got my typical seven round here, but then I've got this big beefy sucker, which is set up for a two inch receiver. But the beautiful thing is there's definitely a bolt pattern here for a legit pintle style hitch. So that's gonna be really neat. And hands down the coolest thing is the NATO plug. I don't know if you could truly call this a NATO plug because it should be 24 volts. If you put 24 volts to this, you have a bad day at the dealer. But, ooh, this is connected via the overhead console switch at 500 amps. Ask what you might want to use that for. Well, first of all, you could do a receiver hitch style winch on there. That's it, plug that guy in, you got power to it. The other thing is what we've done on some of our Unimog builds is, um, you could actually put up a set of jump, make a set of jumper cables for that. So if you need to jump start somebody, instead of hooking up on under the hood there, you can literally plug in here and you've got all the power that you need to pretty much everybody. So that's kind of, that's a plus. We'll have to try that out, make sure that's gonna be fine. It should be fine, but uh, if you didn't do that, Enios already provides perfect jumper posts up in the front under the engine bay. But I'm telling you what, if I could just have a plug in here and do that, that's better yet. Pull points, fully welded in. The, the frame back here, it's kind of got a diaper of heavy steel that ties into the hitch that also kind of ties and flows into the frame here. The frame width is from here to here, so that's quite impressive. In fact, it's wide enough, it flares, it goes here, it dips in probably about five inches and then flares out again, giving you enough room to get those coils out wide enough to give you some stability to fight that roll and then also being able to put the shocks further out. The nice thing is, as you can see, <clears throat> they tuck those shocks down towards the wheel. I am so sick of seeing something hanging out right down to here, it's just a joke. So this is out far away. So if you aim your tire into those rocks, you should be able to bring it up and clear it. The other nice plus is 
that steel is, it's not, it's every bit of 3 16 thick. It's not a quarter inch, but a touch under. Super beefy, not your normal stamped out stuff. So definitely a plus there. And like I mentioned before, we got the diaper here, hiding a muffler there. But the cool thing is we started jabbing around in there. Enios has done so much heat shielding to protect the underside of this thing from that raging B58 BMW motor because they know people are going to crank these things up. That's hard to see. But there's a ton of room hiding up above this here. Um, I'm guessing that's for the diesel guys. Maybe their diesel tank was up above it I, here and there or different, I don't know. But uh, anyway, it's really uh, nice to see that. And again, I mentioned this on the very first video, uh, the departure angles on this are high and tight. The gauge of the metal is just not very confidence inspiring. Good news is if you can make it so you don't hit it, it doesn't have to be that beefy, right? But we're probably gonna hit it. So we're gonna do something. Six and a half hours later. We finally got a chance to get this thing all laser scanned in. We did exterior interior and remove some of the components like the front bumper assembly, rear bumper assembly, and the wheels because we need to get in there for some of the stuff that we want to build for this guy. This thing's crazy. It's really cool. Um, I think the first thing I'm going to show you that's that people will understand easily as to how uh, beefy this thing is. If you come over to the rear axle here, <clears throat> to our great, uh, great happiness and surprise, this big old chunk right here, full floater rear end on this guy. That's impressive. Usually I see that on a three quarter ton truck, one ton truck and whatnot. Definitely not on a small, uh, smaller truck. I can't remember. I think I measured this out around 32 millimeters. So that's a beefy rear axle. Um, pretty cool. Park brake is mechanical built into the caliper. So none of that annoying push button, engage your park brake and whatnot. This is old school with a lever. So we're automatics, we don't need it so much, but you can at least be up on a hill. If it's wicked, wicked steep and you're still rolling back, you'd have that park brake and kind of feather that thing off. Um, no instant on off, you can control it as be, you know, at, at your will there. Plus, uh, no annoying open the door and lock on the park brake. I'm pretty sure it does not have that because this is just a mechanical engagement. I had that uh, mistake when I was going by grabbing a newspaper and one of my Mercedes cars opened the door and just about broke the transmission, which was a bummer. So. We'll move on up to front end is just as beefy, if not beefier than we also anticipated. It's massive. <clears throat> You've got a crazy, there's a, uh, the ABS sensor is this crazy vented thing around here. Can't say hundred uh, percent why they did it this way. Um, it's kind of neat because everything's all accessible. The pickup is hiding in here. And then we've got the actual tone ring, if you will, that's basically a laser cut piece of steel. Usually this component is inside of the axle. You'll have a tone ring hiding there in an oil bath. Reason for going outside, I don't know. Maybe we could change that tow ring for something. If you did something, I don't really, I can't say for certain, but the outer trunnion or outer knuckle is massive as we were stating before. It's just huge gigantic, so that's nice. Calipers, big boy. I mean, that is just uh, also impressive. This bolt pattern, as you guys probably all know, that's basically like a sprinter bolt pattern. Um, uh, hub space, uh, hub diameter. I don't know what that is, but I know it's supposed to be spot on with the sprinter. As far as offsets go, I couldn't tell you. Another nice touch, stainless steel brake lines. You don't see that very often on, well, you pretty much never see that on a factory vehicle. Another cool deal is I pointed out earlier, the frame is just huge and yeah, you can kind of see it. I mean, I don't have the biggest hands in the world, but they're not the smallest either. And this thing is just girthy and multiple layers over it. Um, it's just, let me see what he got going on in here. Threw tubes in there for mounting different goodies. Oh yeah, that's for uh, one of the control arms in the front here comes out this way and threads into that. And this is probably, I think the motor mount, which are these cool aluminum mounts that bolt into the frame. So that, that means is we could actually take that stuff off. So anyway, you got that. Uh, you can see underneath here, we got mounting for the uh, rock sliders going here. There's a third, there's a third one in the center we could grab onto. And then the one at the very back end there, you could also see off on the, uh, hiding back in here. This is a very suspect piece to getting hit a lot. So we're going to make a skid plate for this. It's a little tough cause there's a lot of curves, but they did put uh, a couple rib nuts in there. They're pretty small. I mean, that's like, uh, oh man, that's not even a six millimeter nut, uh, bolt that goes in there. So we'll have to see, we may have to grab down onto these points, but that, uh, concave portion is going to make it tough. 
Uh, the reason I got the big stands here is we're going to do, I'm going to drop this axle all the way down and I'm going to try to get this big one piece stainless steel muffler exhaust out of here. And I got to disconnect it all the way up in the front here, which is going to be uh, quite the uh, quite the task, say the least. So, and then working our way more to the back here, I'm going to jump back and forth a bit. So, <clears throat> keep you on your toes. People don't know what a NATO connector is here in the states. This is a NATO connector. We use them on our Unimogs all the time. So this is what Grenadier has offered to us for hooking up a remote winch or anything like that. So that's your typical NATO um, NATO mount. Again, I've never used one of these on a 12 volt application. So, I mean, that doesn't, it's not like it matters as long as your vehicle that you're hooking to, if you are trying to jump it, is not a 24 volt. So, I guess that's something to be aware of for some of us here in the States that may have some Pinsgauer's Mogs, even old uh, military G Wagons. They will probably have this and it's gonna be 24 volt. Don't hook it up. You will fry everything. It will be bad. Rear frame or rear bumper is Gandhi. As you can see here, this is all part of the chassis. Pretty amazing. There's the end of the frame rails here. There's the tie points tied right up into that. Uh, little supports hanging off the side, nothing too crazy there. But then this ties directly, that's our hitch assembly, ties directly into that through there. We also have our, our RV connector on this side. Down here are the little bumperettes. The shape is perfect. Um, the gauge is far from perfect. It's Oh, man, maybe 16 gauge. I'm not 100% sure. So I can't see much of an improvement to do off of this as far as the, the shape. And it grabs on a few points too that are quite good. We may try to make the same thing. We may do a stamp bumper pretty much just like this, but triple the gauge. <clears throat> we'll see what that's going to be. So we may actually get rid of machine out that mold and put, punch those out. So that's cool. Um, and we're going to work our way up again to the front side here. When you look at the front of this guy with the bumper off, you can see your intakes for the coolers. So this cooler on this side is, looks like it goes parallel with the rest of the truck as far as the radiators here. So it's just auxiliary cooling for that. That's what I can see right now because I see the lines tying into a hot and a cold on this guy. There is a small fan pulling air through this one. Now this guy, goes directly to the transfer case because this is a full-time four-wheel drive vehicle. Uh, it's a Tremec or Tremec, uh, that's American transfer case. They ran cooler lines in there, so that's kind of interesting. This does not have a cooling fan. And the neat thing with both these guys is we were thinking originally that these might be part of the intercooler, but they don't look like that's the case at all. Transmission coolers hiding up in there. There are two radiators stacked. Uh, yes, radiator, not condenser, too big for that, and there's water lines going to it. I still haven't found the condenser, so I'm, I'm digging in there. There's quite a, a few layers to peel back on that one. The winch mount is coming through this guy here. I've got my ground and then my different connections going through there, and then that ties into your power on the vehicle itself, which then hiding up in here, and this fender, I believe, <clears throat> is where it looks like an Albion, I believe it's pronounced Albion. Uh, it's a typical uh, relay pack that you see on a lot of um, winches and whatnot these days. Pretty bulletproof. It better be because it's not a very easy spot to get to. <clears throat> so we'll keep playing around with that. Skid plate mounts beefy right through here. The skid plate itself is not overly beefy though. I've got the weight of that guy. It's not bad, but it's not great. I've already tapped it on two things and I haven't done anything with this truck yet really. 23 pounds is the weight of this little guy. It's a good shape. This is very uh, possible of getting damaged. Now the cool thing is here's the factory winch mount setup. This is beefcake right through here. <clears throat> what makes this cool isn't the fact that it's a winch mount. What makes it really cool is if you look coming down vertical on these guys here, <clears throat> that is my impact crush zone. Now, how cool is that, that this isn't actually part of my frame? So if I crash this truck and I crunch my impact zone, I can buy a new one as opposed to a whole new frame. How cool is that? Whoever's uh, designing this thing has got uh, their head in the game. So that's really cool. And this is a red winch. Red makes some nice stuff. And just looking at it, the machining and whatnot, definitely nice. Um, I'm confident it's Chinese as well, but you could buy bad, cheap, bad Chinese stuff or you could buy expensive, good Chinese stuff. It all 
you know, it's, it's kind of a crapshoot, but you really just got to know what's going on from the manufacturer. So let's face it, almost everything is made over there nowadays. So <clears throat> anyhow, uh, some other goodies we got going on here are, oh, now that we've got this up and out of here, <clears throat> you'll be able to see from the backside up and what's going on in here. <clears throat> there is my auxiliary cooling fan. That is for the, uh, the parallel cooling for the truck itself. And that cool little thing up there, you'll hear the Grenadier drive around. It makes this high pitched whining noise. It's the electric motor driving that uh, power steering pump. <clears throat> so that is completely remote, separate from the engine, which is really wild, pretty cool. I'm sure there may be some other vehicles out there like that, but this is my first time being expo exposed to that. This is a great machine, you guys. It is, as far as when you look at it, everything checks off the list. Is it gonna stand the test of the uh, couch pound in full of force? Full effect trying to beat, I'm not gonna break it, but I'm gonna push it. So we're gonna see how this guy goes. Once we get all laser scanned in, we have everything straight, we can make accurate numbers for components. Then we're gonna take it some real world testing. Take it out to the tank trap, take it out to the sandbar, take it out rolling and romping and chasing stuff around. It's gonna be a good time. Make sure you guys stick around for that.